Hello people, do you remember the time I was forced to work with the available light? Well yeah, I prefer having the choice of whether I need or want to use a strobe on a picture. But you know sometimes shit happens and you have to do without. Sometimes you have to travel light, sometimes you didn't plan anything and you have to do with what you have and what you have is not that great. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. But personally, I have a huge problem. I often work with athletes, performers, dancers and they love to move. I love freezing movement and usually I use artificial light strobes to freeze movement and also to help me make my models stand out. And you can add on top of that my obsession for lines, architecture, famous landmarks and yeah I'm in trouble when I'm in a low light, poor light situation or shooting at night without a flash. But first let's get the basics out of the way. How do you work in low light? First when you are working in low light you need a good tripod. I cannot show you mine because I'm using it right now but you can use any tripod. I even sometimes use this one, this Korea pod and it does the job. You need light and one of the most basic and simple thing you can do to have much more light touching your sensor is to work with slow shutter speed. So this will allow you keeping your ISO as low as possible and prevent you from having any noise in your picture. So of course if you're working with slow shutter speed and if you want a really sharp image you gotta use that tripod because your camera has to stay still throughout the process. If you don't have a tripod, you can work handheld. It's gonna be much more difficult to have a sharp image, but there are a few tips that you can use to actually not move when pressing that shutter. Keep your arms close to your body or use a chair or a table to rest your arms on it to keep your camera still, or you can also lean against a wall. Second thing you can do, obviously, is buy an expensive fast lens. Opening wide will help you have a little bit more light in, so if you have a lens that can go 1.8, f1.8, f1.2, good for you. Advice number three, uh, which is not really an advice because it's, it's really obvious. You're going to be looking for any source of light. It can be a lamp, can be a window, uh, big, a store window can do the job if you're working outside. It can be a lamp post, can be street lights, anything that produces a light will help you have better pictures. If you're not a fan of that yellowish type of tint color that the light has inside or even outside, shoot in raw and you can fix this in post, in Lightroom by you know modifying the white balance or you can also modify the white balance in camera before you start shooting. Oh, before you start shooting. And number four, my least favorite thing, crank up your ISO. There was a time where I was obsessed with ISO I didn't want to raise it too high, I wanted to avoid noise at all costs. And this to a point where I really wanted clean pictures and I would do anything for that. Even sacrifice important elements of my style. Most of the tutorials that I see on the web are around portraiture, landscape photography and architecture photography. Which is great, you can make amazing pictures, portraits in low lights, opening at 1.2, blurring around the background, the lights with a beautiful bouquet. You can make amazing night city shots with your camera locked on a tripod and long exposures. But what if I want a deeper depth of field? What if I want much more in focus? What if I want to freeze movement? So I decided to go beyond my fears and try to work in low light situations or at night like I would do it in daytime but with a few key elements that will help me compensate the lack of light. Really finding that sweet spot where I can create an image with an acceptable amount of noise and this without sacrificing too much of my vision and of my style. And you know, working with performers, dancers, they never quite stay still. I want to be able to do whatever I want to shoot and a few weeks back in Toulouse I broke my flash decided to maintain the shoot. Uh, I had a few ideas in my mind, threw some of them away but kept 
the main ones. So for example, I took the risk to freeze the ribbon in this shot. The noise in the picture is still acceptable. On this one, the first time I saw the window, I knew I wanted the entire frame in my shot. The room was really dark compared to the window, but I managed to keep the details on my model. A few years back, I had the opportunity to work inside a church in Strasbourg. We were not allowed to use a flash, and with these rows of benches, this aisle and this chandelier, it would have been difficult for me to think my picture differently. And this is where we have to find that sweet spot. I'm using a tripod to use a kind of a slow shutter speed to have enough light in and to allow Sasha to be tech sharp. Enough ISO, not too much to avoid any distracting noise. And you can use this in nighttime photography. Sometimes things just perfectly align. You have a cool background with a recognizable landmark and a usable light source in the foreground. The simplest and most obvious light source you can find outside is a lamppost. And I've done this a couple times. And on this one, I used the light from a near exit door. To sum it up, I think differently today. I make sure that each image I create is the result of a creative process. If I'm choosing this or these settings, it's for creative reasons. So yes, I could have had uh, less noise in this picture, but I wanted a deeper depth of field. I wanted more in focus. And yes, I would have had a cleaner photo if I had used a slower shutter speed, but I wanted to freeze movement. So all this, all that I've shared so far in this video are my personal choices. It's up to you to make your own. So last year, last December, I was in Rome. You probably have seen already my behind the scenes of my photo shoot made during daytime. And this one was made at night. And I had my 24-70 my 16-35 and my tripod. That's all. Here is the BTS. Let's go. So what is your philosophy, what is your strategy when the light is nowhere to be found? Tell me all about it. Thanks for being with me again this week. Please consider giving a little thumbs up and sharing this video for support. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please do so. If you don't want to miss my next video, click the little bell button just behind the subscribe button. And until next week, have a good one.